Hi everyone, I'm very glad I can present Pipelines and Job Schedulers in the JuliaCom 2023. The two packages are used for computational workflow development. I'm Jiacheng Chuan, a bioinformatician at Clean Food Inspection Agency. I'm the creator of Pipelines and Job Scheduler. I'm also a full stack developer. Here, I will limit the computational workflows as a series of programming steps to transform raw data into a processed results, figures, and insights. A workflow can be used in a large-scale data analysis and bioinformatics, even anything that uses parallel computing. Or, if you want to glue other languages together, you can use the computational workflow. The two packages I mentioned here, the first one is Pipelines. Pipeline is used to build reusable programs. It's a wrapper of external commands or pure Julia functions. You will define the input and output. You can validate them. You can check the dependencies. And the most important thing is you can resume interrupted tasks, retry failed tasks, and skip finished tasks. In job schedulers, it's a package to manage programs and workloads. You can manage CPU and memory. You can run a job at a specific time. You can defer a job until other jobs are done. Also, you can have the repetitive jobs using Linux-based cron-like expressions. It provides a fancy progress meters in terminal. First, we'll talk about pipelines. Pipelines have a type called program. It's an abstract type wrap a function or a command. It consumes input and produces output. It has many pre and post validations you can define. The two subtypes here, one called command program, another called Julia program. Use an example to illustrate them. It's a sequence alignment tax in bioinformatics. In the batch scripts, we want to define some of the variables, and then the command will transfer into Julia. In the Julia code, first we're using the pipelines, and then we have the variables, and then define the inputs, outputs. The output here, the BAM, has the default value called sec.bam. The sec was directly used the input. We do not use the dollar sign here because dollar sign will directly interpolate in Julia. But here, sec value needs to be provided by users at a later stage, so we do not interpolate here. The command is a Julia version of the batch script. And here is a command template. We have the undefined ref and the sec. They will be replaced when users have the input. To run the program, we can just use the run command, followed by your program just defined. And then we provide the ref sec number of CPU and the BAN file. Because we know the number of CPU and the BAN file has different values, so they are optional. And we'll talk about the wrong keyword arguments. Some keyword arguments represent the function, like you can retry several times. You can change to the working directory, check the dependencies, control the verbose level, Another feature is you can have a type restriction. To use type restriction, you use this sign points to your string. If you have default value, the order of default value and type doesn't matter. And here is a most important feature of program. It will not run twice. This was done by generating a run ID file in the working directory. The name of run ID file comprises two parts. The first one is a program prefix. We'll talk about that later. Another part is the uh, UUID, computed from all input and output arguments. Here we compute it using ref sec number of CPU and bind to one UUID string. And also the run ID file contains the state of all files of input and output. Here you have ref sec and bind file. The state of file means the time of edit and the file size. If anything changes, the program will rerun. But wait, what if I change the number of CPU from 8 to 16? You'll see the user ID will change, so the program will rerun. That's unexpected. Uh, how do we solve this? 
when you introduce an uh, independent argument, an independent argument means changing those arguments does not affect the results. Usually, we use a string to define the input keyword. Now here, we change this to symbol. So the program can understand it's an independent argument. It will be ignored when computing a wrong ID. Besides that, we can check our dependencies in advance. The old script, we use both I2 and some tools. We can define some tools as a command dependency. EXDC means the binary pass to the executable. Then you have the test arguments version, and then you can validate the standard output or standard error using the function you define. The pipeline can auto-check the dependencies before program run. You will add command dependencies here. You can replace the some tools using the command dependencies you just defined. Besides that, program provides many ways to validate your inputs and outputs. Here is validate inputs. Validate the input accepts a function or a quote. A quote is an expression. Elements in input and output can be directly used as variables in quotes, like the ref sec. You can directly use it. It's very straightforward. Besides, you can have some prerequisites before running the main command. We make sure the path exists before we run the code. After the program run, you can validate the output. Here, we check whether the file exists and whether the file is not empty. At last, when all those done, you can have a wrap-up expression. A wrapper expression is used when your code generates lots of temporary files. You want to delete them, and you want to move some output to another location. Here is another argument of command program. You can define the name of program and ID file. The ID file will prepend to the wrong ID file. You put a dot there because you want to hide the ID file in Linux systems. I'd like to mention the module. I recommend to pass mod equals module when you define your program within a package. Without this, all the quotes will convert it into function in pipeline module. When you are building an app, you will find all the functions you generated are defined in pipelines rather than your own module. It has an incremental compilation error. So you will use it when within a package. Here we'll talk about command program. What about Julia program? Both are almost the same. All the features are valid for both command program and Julia program. The only difference here, command program have a command. And for Julia program, you will define your main expression. How do we connect all the programs into a workflow? Here we introduce job scheduler. They can manage different programs and workloads. Why do we need it? Why don't we just use the internal Julia scheduler? Here is the reason. The job scheduler is designed to manage different tasks which use different number of CPUs and memory. And uh, some of the tasks can run simultaneously, but some programs have to run sequentially. Use job scheduler, you can easily write the code in a streamline without a lot of sync and wait. Another thing is supports recurring tasks, and it's scalable. You can adjust your CPU and memory at runtime. You want to give CPU and memory to other tasks, you can do that. And the most important type of job scheduler is a job. It's a wrapper of command, function, task, and also the program we just mentioned. It has a job keyword arguments that you can control how to run the job. And when the input is a program, you can have the program and the input outputs. All the run keyword arguments are accepted, and the job keyword arguments are also accepted. So both packages are built together. Here is the keyword arguments of job. The first argument is uh, the task function, command, and program. Then job name and uh, job owner. Here is the most important number of CPU and number of memory to allocate to the job. You can schedule your task like second three is a period 
it will run after three seconds. It can also be a date time. So the program will run at the specific time. The what time controls how long the program can run. After the what time, the program will be canceled. You can change the priority of your tasks. And here is an important one called dependencies. You can defer job until some jobs reach some states. Like we use command job, which means when the command job is done, we can run the job. Also, we need to wait for task job to be done. And here we assign past. Past is a superset of done, failed, or canceled. That means when function job is finished or failed or canceled, you will run the job. And the two crown and down till controls job recurring. We'll talk about that later. Here is some job related functions. Like we submit a job, there are two ways. First, we define the job and then we submit it. Another thing is more straightforward. We can just use submit to replace the job. And all the arguments are the same as job. So it's more neat. To cancel a job, you can pass cancel. Get a job's result after it finished, you can use result job. And you can show the job query. The query will show the querying and the running jobs only. And to show all jobs, you will need to use a symbol O or query O equals two. It will show all the jobs. It's a vector. Also, you can filter your jobs by state. Here, the state is done. Also, you can filter by name or user because name or users are string. It will, you can query the partial string there. You can use regular expression. You can combine the state and the name user filter together. Also, you can retrieve a job because the job is a vector. So you can use like one and end. Another thing, you can retrieve the jobs by the job ID. Here is how we control the job repeat. It's called cron. Why we call it cron? In Linux, it has a cron tab. Is a tabular file that controls how to run a job at a specific time. They also have some differences. Like the Linux cron tab, you only have minute, hour, day, or month, month, day, or week. You do not have a second. But in Julia, sometimes we want some program to run every 10 seconds. We have to include a second in the cron here. Cron allows numbers. Also, you can use your favorite cron tab like syntax. Like the star stands for first to last. You can accept the list as a string value. You can use comma to separate them. Also, accept steps. The same as cron tab. 0 to 23 slash 2 means it will get the even numbers of 0 to 4 until 22. The star sign means all, means all even numbers. All the list steps were converted into an internal unsigned integer 64. And here, you have some special characters, like yearly, annually, monthly, weekly, daily, midnight, hourly. Or now, now is a new one in job schedulers. The default is set to now. Also, to run every minute, just use cron. Then sometimes we want to wait for all jobs to be finished. To accomplish this, we have a function called wait query. We integrate a progress meter there, so people can monitor job progress. Let's set number of jobs. It's a stop waiting when the query has a number of jobs less than a specific number. It's useful because sometimes we do not need to wait for all jobs to be finished because some jobs are in the background. They do some regular monitors. We can avoid those tasks. 
or if some jobs are recurring, they are always in the queue. Here is the video of how the progress meter shows. Now first, you may notice that it has a group, the, like the mapping has a group tasks. The total mapping task is 95. Also, you can resize your uh, your window. The progress meter will fit. After all this talk, we will talk about a workflow example. Here we have four programs. Program A and B can run simultaneously, and uh, but they require different number of CPU and RAM. And uh, we need to run program D only when program B and C are finished to use job scheduler. It's very straightforward. First, we define program A, B, C, D, and then we submit job A, use uh, program A and the S arguments. It needs two CPU and four gigabytes RAM. We define it here. For job B, it does not have any dependencies, so we just submit like job A except the number of CPU is 8. For program C, we need to wait program A to be done. So here is a dependency. It's job A. For program D, it need to wait two tasks to be done. One is program B. Program B reached past, which means the program D is done, failed, or canceled. So we give job B passed. And then the job C need to successfully run here, job C as a dependency. This is the general workflow of how we use job schedulers and pipelines together to create a workflow. It's easy to maintain and easy to use. Here is a recap. The pipeline package is used to build resumable programs. You can check your input and output. You have pre and post process. You can resume, retry, or skip tasks. The job scheduler can manage programs and workloads. You can allocate different tasks using different number of CPU and memory. You can run a job at a specific time. You can defer a job until some jobs are finished. Also, you can have the recurring jobs. The last, you have a fancy progress meter in terminal. Both packages are being used for a long time myself. I wrote a bacteria classification web service using the two packages, and they'll be run smoothly for about one year. And so I think it's time to present my work to the junior community. Now those two packages are ready to use. And if you have any suggestions, don't forget to report an issue on the GitHub. Thank you.